Welcome, take a seat and enjoy my 10 recommendations for romance anime. As the romance genre is popular on both sides of the spectrum, it can be hard to find the right show to start with. I prepared for you all 10 shows which can be a nice start into the journey of the romance anime genre. I will start with the best ones, but keep in mind that all of them are equally good and in the end you are your own judge on taste. At number 1 we have the Kaguya-sama Lois War, featuring a fight of lovers reason. The one who confesses will be looked down upon and considered the one with the lesser standing in the relationship. It's literally a war about having the upper hand on the battlefield called love. Who will be victorious, ranked the top student in the nation and respected by peers and mentors like Miyuki the student council president? Or will it be the vice president Kaguya eldest daughter? of the wealthy Shinomiya family which excels in every field imaginable. In Love Story where none is safe and thrown into the mix with the other members of the student council, Ishigami Yu, a reserved and gloomy student, and the ditzy unpredictable mother of the student council who throws a wrench or two in between Miyuki and Kaguya just due to her misunderstandings, Fujiwara Chika, a love story full of comedy, romance and psychological warfare welcomes you. Or number 2 is the Fruits Basket's 2019's remake. Toru was forced to live in a tent all alone because of a family tragedy and subsequent circumstances. Being fascinated by the zodiac signs that her beloved late mother told her as a child, she does not know that she is trespassing onto the private property of the esteemed Soma family. One day she stumbles upon their home on the way to school where Shigure, the oldest Soma cousin and Yuki, the prince of her school, live. What will this encounter entail and what does the future hold for our little Toru? As she finds out more of the Soma family and even the big secrets which are within said family, how will the story unfold? A really hard dramatical Roman story with some supernatural elements, a real train wreck of a story. At number 3 we have the dangers in my heart. A shy reserved middle school kid Ichikawa Kyotaro often seeks shelter at the library. He frequently runs into his classmate Yamada. In his heart he has a bloodthirsty desire to either kill or see Yamada to writh in pain before ending her life. We've got an edgy kid alert! But but but! During those library encounters, Ichikawa realizes that his model classmate is actually an airhead who can never read the room. Always giving him the wrappers of her snacks, Yamada, and Ichikawa slowly breaking free of his mold called inferiority, Kyoto getting the little courage to take baby steps into the relationships he has with Yamada and Yamada getting interested onto him. How will the romantic comedy unfold? You just have to watch it. At number 4 sits my youth romantic comedy is wrong as I expected. Or in short, Oregairu slash Snafu. Hachiman Hikigaya is an apathetic high school student with a narcissistic and semi nihilistic tendencies. In short, he's a douchebag. He firmly believes that a joyful youth is nothing more but a phrase and everyone who says otherwise is just lying to themselves. Hachiman's teacher forces him to join the volunteer service club. A club that aims to extend a helping hand to any student who seeks their support in achieving their goals. So why was he punished? Well, because he was cheeky and wrote an essay mocking the modern social relationships. So with the only other club member being the ice queen Yukino Yukinoshita, Hachiman finds himself on the front line of other people's problems. Well, let's see how Hachiman will tackle the problems that come his way, either the silly ones or the romantic ones. Who knows, maybe he will get lucky and experience some romantic problems for himself. Number 5 is reserved for Horimiya. Being essentially one of the most realistic stories out there, we get a Polish take about how romance and love can happen through coincidences. On the surface, Kyoko Hori and Izumi Miyamura getting along would be the last thing in people's minds. After all, Hori has a perfect combination of beauty and brains. While Miyamura appears meek and distant to his fellow classmates, Hori, being popular as she is, has little time to socialize with her friends due to housework. On the other hand, Miyamura lives under the radar of his peers. 
his body having secret tattoos and piercing that would make him look like a delinquent possibly getting him into a lot of trouble. Throughout a fateful coincidence, in between the two of them their secrets are laid bare in between them. Having opposite personalities yet sharing odd similarities, the two quickly become friends and often spend time together in Hori's home. Please enjoy the romance which is Horimiya. At number 6 we have the quintessential quintuplets. Wasugi Futaro, who has most of the time perfect grades, a perfect opportunity presents to him. A private tutoring gig for a wealthy family's daughter. Because of his family's tough circumstances and his father's debt, he has accepted the five times the market price proposal gig. It would be all nice and good only if he did not find out that the client is not one but five. Discovering his client is one of the girls he met the same day who claimed his seat at lunch, leading to them disliking each other. The girl Itsuki Nakano is actually a quintuplet and he has to tutor the five girls. Five sisters who for the most part want to have nothing to do with the tutoring. How does the story unfold? Will he continue to teach the girls Itsuki, Miku, Yotsuba, Nino and Ichika? I mean, will he even recognize which he is with? With his livelihood on the line, watch the romantic comedy unfold. Number 7 and 8 are the shortest on the list, being number 7 we have My Dress Up Darling. High school student Wakana Gojo spends his days perfecting the art of making Hina dolls, hoping to eventually reach his grandfather's level of expertise. While his fellow teenagers busy themselves with pop culture, Gojo finds bliss in soothing clothes for his Hina dolls. Enta Marin Kitagawa, an extraordinarily pretty girl whose confidence and poise are in stark contrast to Gojo's meekness. It would defy common sense for the friendless Gojo to mix with the likes of Kitagawa, who is always surrounded by her peers. However, the unimaginable happens when Kitagawa discovers Gojo's powers with the soothing machine and brightly confesses to him about her own hobby. Cosplay! Because her soothing skills are straight up bad, she decides to ask for his help. As Gojo and Kitagawa work together on one cosplay outfit after another, they cannot help but to grow close. The romance story of My Dress Up Darling begins. At number 8 we have the number 100. The 100 girlfriends who really 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 love you. It's a parody take on the romance harem genre which is taken to the next level. If you don't mind the excessive levels of fan service and you take the show for what it is, then you are in for a treat. Enta Aijo Rentero, a guy who despite his intelligence, looks, athletic skills and popularity with everyone involved, could not get a single girlfriend till the last day of middle school. After his 100th rejection, he has no other choice than to go to a temple and pray to God which finally answers his call and explains that he has not one, but 100 soulmates by mistake. And that is not all. If he does not date a soulmate, the soulmate will end up with a horrible fate. There he is on his quest in his new high school to date 100 different girls. I mean, God gave a man a mission, but the man who received it was overqualified. Even if Renter initially does not take this foretelling seriously, he has to take it seriously when on the first day of the school he meets two of his soulmates, Hakari Hanazono and Karane Indavu both confess to him at the same time. With crazed encounters and low confession madness, Rentaro's life is about to get a lot more exciting. Entry number 9 is my love story. Being someone with a muscular build and a doll statue, Takeo Gouda is no ordinary high school freshman. Behind Takeo's intimidating appearance lies a pure heart of gold. He is considered a hero by his male peers for his courage and chivalry, saving the day on many occasions Takeo's build plays a big role. Unfortunately for Takeo, his appearance does not bode well for his low life as one would expect. And as if it was not enough, Takeo's best of friend though, the cool handsome companion Makoto Sunakawa easily and unintentionally steals the hearts of the female students, including every girl Takeo has ever liked. One day when Takeo saves a cute girl Rinko Yamato from being molested, he instantly falls in love with her. Unfortunately, he is under the misconception that she might be interested in Sunakawa. Takeo being supportive to Suna despite his romantic feelings for Yamato. How will Takeo's love story unfold? Let's watch it together. 
Today's last entry is the entry number 10. It is the well-known classic Golden Time. Due to a tragic accident, Ban Ritada is stuck with amnesia, destroying the memories of his hometown and the past. However, after befriending Mitsuo Yanagisawa, he decides to move on and begin a new life at law school in Tokyo. But just as he is beginning to adjust his college life, the beautiful Koko Kaga dramatically barges into Banri's life, and their chance meeting marks the beginning of an unforgettable year. After having a glimpse of college life, Banri learns that he is in a new place, a whole new world opens to him where he can be reborn, have new friends, fall in love, make mistakes and grow. And as he begins to discover who he was, the path he has chosen leads him towards a blindingly bright life that he will never want to forget. Enjoy the drama-filled romance of Amnesia Banri. Thank you all for staying till the end. Press like for more similar content. I do have already a list for the continuation in mind. Thanks again for watching and stay in good health. See you all later. Bye!